great godly Sunday morning. Yes, this is a godly morning because God has allowed us to rise and shine and to be able to give his name glory. You know, God is at work doing a great work in the earth, and we don't get to hear that on our local news stations, uh, world news stations, but I just want to remind us of that. From the kingdom of God, God is doing a great work. God is faithful to his people. God is keeping the covenant from generation to generation. God is hearing the cry of his children, those who pray and call on his name. God is receiving our worship, our offerings, our sacrifices. God is on his throne, ruling and reigning on high, and we give him praise and glory. Well, I want to thank you for taking time to come together and to feast in the word of God. Uh, set in your heart, in your mind, in your will to be at the table of truth, the word of God. And before we go on our lesson today, I just want us to take time to reflect on God's faithfulness. This is where it gets personal, where you can look back on your life and you see the faithfulness of God. Uh, that even in difficult times and even in times of your personal uh, disobedience, yet God loved you to health. Yes, he loved you to health. He restored you and, and he's merciful and he's kind. And the world we're living in today, people are not talking about what God has done and is doing and is going to do, but we are. And so I just want you to take time to give thanks unto the Lord, genuinely thanking him now, just not just throwing up a word, but reflecting on your life and things that just come to mind that you're so thankful because you know if it had not been for God on your side, where would you be? Yes, that's not a, a traditional slogan. That's the word of the Lord. Well, the Psalms say in Psalm 100 and verse number four and five say, enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise be thankful to him and bless his name for the Lord is good his mercy is everlasting and his truth endures to all generations we we thank him because of his mercy we thank him because of his goodness and we thank him because of his truth so, Father, we thank you and praise your name today because you are a faithful high priest. Thank you, Father, for the mercies that you are providing in the earth right now, Father. It is because of your mercies that we have not been consumed because you are faithful. Thank you for the way you have visited your people, God, and thank you for the way you have strengthened uh, Zion. Thank you for the way you have uh, strengthened the church, Lord God, the believers in the earth. Thank you for giving us the grace to stand and after doing all to stand. Thank you, Father, for being a great provider and meeting our needs and, 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 and making sure, Father, that the things that are, are happening in our life, that we don't have to worry because our Father cares. And we give you the praise and the glory. Thank you, Father, for the word, the truth that you've given us, the light that you've given us. Thank you for the scriptures, Father, and the Holy Spirit and, and, and the anointing of your power in our lives. Thank you, Father, for the saints of God, the body of Christ, the believers. We give you praise and glory for the family of God, for the household of faith. And now, Father, we thank you that as we go in your word, you are with us, Father, we pray you will just speak to our hearts and give us wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, Father, that we may build our lives and build our families and, and build our communities and build our cities and our nations, Father, in a manner that glorifies God and righteousness is exalted. We give you all the praise and all the glory in Jesus' wonderful name. Well, we're going to continue to minister in this area of stand on course with God because we know that 
in the midst of this world we're in, God has given us peace. Hallelujah. That's why we rejoice. And not only that, but God has a promise that he will uh, he will brighten our path. He will cause our path, our direction in life to be uh, lit up by his grace and presence. And so we got give God all the glory for his faithfulness. But I think you would agree with me that we all perhaps have had those times in our Christian walk whereby we needed a long to have God speak to our hearts. Not that we were waiting on an audible sound, but an inner comfort and confidence that God was leading us a certain way or confirming a certain decision we had to make or providing a solution to a dilemma we were facing in our lives. Yes, I believe we all can look back and perhaps even now maybe uh, that experience is going on where you want God to be able to provide that comfort and counsel and confidence in your heart. Speak to my heart, Lord. Familiar song, and I know Donnie McClurkin sung this song, and, and it says something like this, Speak to my heart, Lord. Give me your holy word. If I can't hear from you, then I don't know what to do. I won't go on, Lord. I'll never go on my own. Just let your spirit guide me and your word abide. Speak to my heart, God. Hallelujah. That should be the cry of every believer at certain junctions in our life. Lord, I need you to speak to my heart. I need you to get confirmed and give me a comfort and a, and a confirmation and a confidence that you are leading me in this way. Well, take your Bibles and turn with me to the book of Habakkuk. This is an Old Testament prophet. We call him one of the minor prophets because of the length of their particular writings. They're just as uh, important as Jeremiah, Isaiah, anyone else. But the prophet Habakkuk had such an experience in his day whereby he came to a resolve that he would pour out his heart a complaint before God and then resume a posture of stillness and waiting on God's response to the cry of his heart. In chapter 2 verse 1 it reads like this. This is, this is the prophet Habakkuk's resolve. He said, I will stand my watch and set myself on the rampart and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Habakkuk is at a very crucial point in his life. He's at a point where he needs God to speak to his heart. He needs God to give him the next step. He needs God to, to, to make uh, the cricket straight. He need God to confirm on the inside of his heart that regardless of what you are seeing, regardless of what you are feeling, regardless of what you are facing, that my hand of righteousness is upon your life. And I'm doing a work that cannot be denied. I want you to journey with me through this prophet's personal experience and and gain wisdom in how we too can seek God to speak to our hearts and provide us comfort and confidence in decisions and directions in our faith walk. You see, if you're making any decision in your life, if you are facing a dilemma and you're wondering what to do and, and you don't have that comfort from the Lord, that confidence from the Lord, it's going to be very difficult to trust God through whatever that process may look like, to whatever time and God uh, has set that may not be in line with what you want <laughs> it to be. But man, if you've got that witness in your heart and your spirit of the comfort, of the confidence of God's speaking to your spirit, or you're going to be able to 
stand courageously in that situation. You're going to be able to speak boldly. You're going to be able to be free from stress and anxiety because you just sense in your heart that God is speaking to me. Hallelujah. Not so much an audible voice, but there's something he's stirring up because I'm seeking him and I'm, I'm crying out to him and, and he settled me in my anxiety and fears and, and all of that's gone. So, so what? He's speaking to my heart. A few lessons I think we can gain is this from Habakkuk. Is that God speaks to our hearts to enable us to have clarity and counsel that reveals his active participation in our personal experiences. If you look at chapter 1 uh, verse 2, the scripture reads like this. Oh Lord, this is Habakkuk. How long shall I cry and you will not hear? Even cry out to you violence and you will not save. Why do you show me iniquity and cause me to see trouble? For plundering and violence are before me. There is strife and contention arises. Therefore the law is powerless and justice never goes forth. For the wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, perverse judgment proceeds. Listen to God's response in verse 5. Look among the nations and watch, for be utterly astounded. For I will work a work in your days, which you would not believe, though it were told you. God's servant Habakkuk finds himself perplexed by the conditions in which God's people are having to endure. While at the same time witnessing positive conditions of those who have no regard for God. You see, conditions of this nature are one of those means God uses to build his character on the inside of his children. This prophet is pouring out his heart of complaint before God and identify what is going on and how it is impacting him personally as well as God's people. This is a good moment for Habakkuk to realize that the wicked and wickedness is under a contract with the cancellation period by God. Oh, glory to God. I like the way Ecclesiastes and Solomon's uh, approach to look at life as life really was and to be real with the reality of this world that we're in and he ventured out and you know we can say he went on a bucket list run to try certain things only to find out that it leads to vanity emptiness it doesn't bring fulfillment but when it came to the wicked listen what he said in Ecclesiastes 8 verse 10 and I'm reading it from the Living Bible translation he said, I have seen wicked men buried and as their friends returned from the cemetery, having forgotten all the dead man's evil deeds, these men were praised in the, in the very city where they had committed their crime. Notice, notice, Solomon is being real. This is the world we live in. People can do all kinds of evil. People <laughs> can do evil in positions of leadership in our land. And when they die, people celebrate them as if though they were some great figure. And all of a sudden you look at their track record and that's, that's what's going on in America when we look at all of these statues and, and symbols that they have erected over years and now, now uh, America is ready to deal with this. These people don't deserve to be celebrated. These these. People don't deserve to have statues and images put up on places of public uh, 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 life. These are not heroes. These are wicked and evil men. And so, so uh, Solomon said, people celebrate evil men when they die. He goes on to say in verse 11, when a crime is not punished quickly, people feel it is safe to do wrong. But even though a person sins a hundred times and still lives a long time, I know that those who fear God will be better off. Oh, I love that. 
Those who honor God will be better off. You know, people think they're better off because they're getting away with stuff and doing all kinds of evil and stuff. And uh, you figure, they figure, well, if I don't get caught, but oh, God eyes are over the whole earth beholding the good and the evil. But here's the good news. We that are honoring God, uh, things are going to be uh, far better for us. We're going to be better off in life. Not because uh, we are envious of the wicked or jealous of them or, or following their ways and, and operating like them. That's why you don't come down to people level of wickedness. They could be doing something in that work setting. And uh, you know it's not fair, but you don't get down on that level. You walk in the spirit. You walk on a higher plane. You honor the word of God. Why? Because God said things are going to work out far better for your life. Proverbs 14 and 32 says this, the wicked one is thrown down by his own sin, but the righteous one has a refuge to, in his death. Glory to God. I'm telling you what, you want to remain operating in righteousness. Oh, yes. Yes, because righteousness is a mark that we have that's going to lead us into eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ. In Psalm 7, verse 9 through 11, we're talking about the wicked. And that's what uh, uh, Habakkuk was dealing with. Look how the wicked is prospering. Look how things are working out well for the wicked. And look at our life. We are suffering, and yet we are honoring God. And you got to be careful that you don't put your eyes on the wicked and think they're prospering. They may be prospering in the natural, but remember Solomon said, it is only temporary. The psalmist said, oh, let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end. But establish the just for the righteous God test the hearts and minds. My defense is of God who saved the upright in heart. God is a just judge and God is angry with the wicked every day. God is aware of the injustice in our land. God is aware of people behind closed doors and they are creating uh, strategies and policies that's wicked and evil and, and bringing injustice uh, 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 in people. Like God sees all that. Yes, the Bible says God is angry at the wicked every day. And the day of the wicked is going to show up. It's going to show up in their lives. In Psalms 37, verse 1 through 4, say, Do not fret because of evil doers. Be not envious toward wrongdoers. For they will wither quickly like the grass and fade like the green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and cultivate faithfulness. Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. So don't worry about evil doers. I mean, they'll try to cover it up. They'll try to lie and do all that. You don't run behind any of that. God is a righteous judge. God know exactly the matter. Hallelujah. And a lot of times you don't have to go out and try to defend yourself when people lie and do all kinds of things. You just smile. And say, oh, goodness. I know God is the righteous judge. Yes, God judges righteously. And Hebrew 3 verse 7 through 11 reads like this. So as the Holy Spirit says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your hearts as you did in the rebellion during the time of testing in the wilderness where your ancestors tested and tried me, uh, though for 40 years they saw what I did. That is why I was angry with that generation. I said their hearts are always going astray and they have not known my way. So I declare an oath in my anger. They shall not enter into my rest. It goes on to say, see to it, brothers, that none of you has a sinful, unbelieving heart that turns away from the living God, but encourage one another daily as long as it is called today. So that none of you may be hardened by sin's deceitfulness. We have come to share in Christ if we hold firmly till the end the confidence we had at first. Notice, notice. It's your confidence. It's my confidence in Christ that we hold regardless of how people behave. Regardless of how wicked people prosper in their wickedness. Don't let that become your focus. Don't let it become your conversation. Don't let it become uh, what you're afraid of. Sometimes people in this election and everything, man, sometimes people are talking like if a certain person is in office, their life is doomed. They, they believe there's no hope. Let me tell you something. You're in Christ first and foremost. You're born again. God is your father. No man, uh, you don't fear no man. You trust in the name of God. We got to remember the things that God has revealed in this word. This is how we live our life. This is what we believe. Hallelujah. 
We are not to fear what man can do unto us. The Lord is on our side. He will help us. Hallelujah. And so you got to maintain that confidence. You got to hold on to that confidence. Well, Habakkuk, he's, he's dealing with this matter. And he's, he's vocal about it. He's, he's bringing it before God. The next lesson I believe we can gain is God speaks to our hearts to remind us to trust him in the manner in which he chooses to bring discipline and deliverance in our life. Now God has responded to Habakkuk that he's at work behind the scene. That he is on the case. Hallelujah. He's doing something about it. But if you notice through verse 6 to 17, the issue here with Habakkuk is the method that God chose to use. It's here that Habakkuk have received counsel from God that he's aware of the experience he's having and the people are going through. And he has a plan of action working behind the scene. However, Habakkuk has a problem with the manner in which God is addressing the problem. And we have to be careful, saints. Uh, God may handle a matter in a way that just basically looked totally opposite of what we would have done. And we have to trust him in this. This is where Habakkuk needed the traditional choir to render a selection called, Any way you fix me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. <laughs> Glory to God. In other, words, in other words, Habakkuk is not satisfied with the any way you fix me play. <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. You know that song, people, people throw it out there and then, you know, God working out things a certain way. They're not satisfied with it. They just saying, any way you fix me, Lord, I'll be satisfied. But I know how you're going to fix me, Lord. You're going to fix me according to the word of God. You're going to fix me according to the anointing. You're going to fix me according to the wisdom of God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You're not just going to throw me up in the air and, you know, and leave me out there by myself and wherever I fall, I just is going to take it. No, God. God is skillfully at work working in our life. Hallelujah. We are of, 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 of great value to him. Glory to God. He just don't throw us out there and say anywhere I fix you, I hope you're satisfied. No, he take his time. He love us to health. He he, he, he strengthens us. He, he's right there here in our... I get this. He hears our complaints. He hears when we're crying out in our heart. Hallelujah. God is just that faithful and merciful. Now here Habakkuk can decide to take the fight or flight stance. It's an instinctive psychological response to a threatening situation which one can either resist forcibly or run away. Well, Habakkuk chooses neither. However, he does choose to lean, uh, uh, he, he did choose to lean to his own understanding and he hurled three questions back at God. And the first one he heard was this. Why are you tolerating the sin of Babylon? We see that in verse 13 because he said, You are of pure eyes than to behold evil. You cannot look on wickedness. Why do you look on those who deal treacherously and hold your tongue when the wicked devours? Yes, he want to he wanna ask God, why are you putting up with this? Why are you allowing this sin in Babylon to just, just go on? In other words, sometimes we want God to bring the hammer of judgment on others. We don't want it on ourselves. The other question he has is, will all Judah, will you allow Judah to be seized upon like a fish? He said that in verse 14 and 15. He said, why do you make men like fish of the sea, like creeping things, that have no rule over them. They take up all of them with the hook, they catch them in their net, and gather them in their drag net, therefore they rejoice and are glad. In other words, why are you allowing your people to be seized upon like they're just fish? Just to be, you know, taken advantage of. And the other question is, how long will you be silent? In verse 16 he said, shall they therefore empty their net and continue to slay nations without pity. You know what he's saying? How long are you going to keep waiting? How long are you going to be silent, God? You see, it's a human response to want to know how. And it does not suggest we are not trusting God, 
but it does reveal we're trying to understand a supernatural move in a natural way. And I believe that's why Habakkuk is missing it. it, 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 it he's, he's, a, he's a servant of God. But I believe he can't fully grasp the supernatural power that God releases out. I mean, he don't realize that God already had a plan before this ever happened. I remember Daniel, God told him, the moment you set your heart to pray, I release an angel, a warfare an angel. Saints, God is working in a supernatural way. Even in our nation, if we're praying and crying out to God, there's some supernatural going on. Even in your own life, there's some supernatural going on. In your family, and, and, and when you're interceding for loved ones and parents, when you're interceding for children, there, there's some supernatural. Now listen, listen. Some parents only think some supernatural going on when they see the devil work. And immediately they say, oh, the devil this, oh, the devil that. Oh, I prayed and look at the devil. No, 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 no. Look at God if you pray. Look, look through the eyes of the spirit. Look at, look at God moving and, and, and working in a certain way. Hallelujah. Don't give your attention to the devil and his works. Rejoice in the works of God. Rejoice in the fact that if I'm praying, God is at work. Hallelujah. If I believe in God, my faith is working. But it's, 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 it's human to want to know how. How are you going to do it, God? Hallelujah. We can believe he's going to do it, but how are you going to do it? That how is not a, a lack of faith. It's a lack of understanding. And God's okay with the how. Hallelujah. In Luke chapter 1, verse 30 through 34, God visited a virgin. Oh, my God. He visited a virgin. And let me say that word, virgin. Because a lot of times we live in a world today where people think that's no longer a word that's uh, to be used in our society. You know, you don't find uh, uh, that word. That, yeah, that's a word that need to be used. That's the word that need to be preached and proclaimed. That's the word that we need to talk to our children about when they're young and they're not married. And so here in, in Luke chapter 1 verse 30, it says, But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. Now listen. That's the angel talking. Listen to Mary. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Hallelujah. That's what she said. How, how is this going to be? I've never been with a man. How is it going to happen? Listen to verse 37 and 38. For nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. Oh my God. That was a simple response to a heavy word. How? The angel didn't come and give, you know, 25 more verses. Just gave one little, one little line. For nothing is impossible with God. Hallelujah. Mary responded, I am the Lord's servant. May everything you have said about me come true. And then the angel left her. Glory to God. How she received the word of God. I'm telling you, saints, that's how we have to receive the word of God. We got to receive like that word. I mean, that word was from God. That was God speaking in that woman's life. It was supernatural. And she believed that God could do the supernatural and that God was going to do the supernatural. She just needed to have understanding. How is this thing going to be? And basically the angel said, God's going to do this. Hallelujah. Man ain't going to do this. Hallelujah. God's going to cause this to happen. The Holy Spirit and the power of God's going to come on your life. And the favor of God going to come on your life. Glory to God. Mary's response to the angel's declaration of what the Holy Spirit and the power of God was about to do satisfied her heart. And I believe we got to get to a place where once we hear the word of God and the spirit of God give us peace about it, we are, we are, we are, we are right there at a place of peace. Hallelujah. We're at a place of contentment. We're at a place of rest. We're at a place where God, I'm not wrestling with this thing. And every time the enemy tries to send up a thought or our flesh bring up a thought, we rebuke that in the name of Jesus and continue to confess what we believe. 
believe that God has said, glory to God. If you wake up in the night and the thoughts on your mind and the, the negative part of that situation, you just say in the name of Jesus, I rebuke this and confess the word of God, roll over and go back to sleep. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is supernatural, even with the angel's response. It took faith to believe and accept the supernatural power and move of God. In Isaiah 55, 8 and 10, the prophet said, My thoughts are nothing like your thoughts, says the Lord, and my ways are far beyond anything you could imagine. For just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so my ways are higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. This is the place where our faith has to declare, God... I'm not going to try to figure it out. I'm not going to try to force it. I'm not going to try to flush it out. But I'm going to trust you to work it out in your own way and in your own timing. Hallelujah. Yes, the Bible tells us that God can do exceedingly abundantly above all that we can ask or think through the power that worketh in us. We're just going to have to say, God, you know what? I don't have to sit here and try to, you know, reason it out. I'm just going to take you at this word. I'm going to receive that word and I'm going to let that word become the confession of my mouth. I'm going to let that word come out of my mouth. Now, saints, uh, yes, the word is hidden in our heart, but man, that two-edged sword got to come out. Hallelujah. We got to break it out. Glory to God. It's almost like, you know, somebody breaking in your house and you got a weapon in there and you just leave the weapon alone. You just, no, no, you break it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And we got to break out that weapon of the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God on the inside of our heart. We got to release it out of our mouth. We not Oh, glory to God. We don't say Say it so people can hear it. We'll say it so our faith can hear it. We say it so we can remind the enemy. You get back out of the way. Why? Because I'm fighting you with the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And every fiery dot that you may send, I'm taking my shield of faith and I'm raising it up. Glory to God. I refuse to meditate on defeat. I refuse to meditate on the works of the enemy. I refuse to meditate on things that I know the spirit of God is not speaking relative to my life or circumstance. I believe that God is with me. The favor of God is with me and all things are going to work out good because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. That should be your confession as well. Hallelujah. Well, the last thing I have here is that God speaks to our hearts to provide a vision of what to expect in the future that keeps us on the path of faith in the present. So in Habakkuk chapter 2, when he gets here, he's out of position now where he's literally being still and, and he and he's waiting on God. Hallelujah. And 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 it's here that God began to speak. Hallelujah. Habakkuk is God's servant. Hallelujah. He's hashed out his complaint in confusion of why God have not responded in the manner in which he would have expected. However, he has enough faith to humble himself and decide I'm going to be still and I'm going to be open to the divine correction and instruction from heaven. I think I need to stay here for a second. Divine correction and instruction. You see, the body of Christ, we as Christians, correction is not rejection. Hallelujah. And, 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 and as long as we're in God's family, God will correct us. There are times that God will rebuke us and reprove us, and we take it as though a person is doing it, but it's really when we're out of order, it's the word of God coming to help us. Yes, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. God is by, and it's profitable. Hallelujah. That means beneficial for your maturity in Christian development. Hallelujah. It's, it's, it's inspired by God for reproof and for correction and instruction in righteousness that we may be thoroughly furnished, thoroughly equipped for every good work. It is at this point that God himself takes the mic of life and begins to speak in a manner that allows his servant to look beyond the pain of his present to the power of his future. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Sometimes we need to put the mic down and let God amplify his voice in our hearts. Hallelujah. It begins, first of all, if you notice, in verse 2, 
The Lord answered and said, notice, notice, write. <laughs> Let me say again, write the vision. Now, it begins with writing, and this is not just words on paper, but God's witness of himself ascribed in a manner that the mind and heart of mankind can look beyond their uncomfortable experience to God's prophetic sound. I submit to you today, God, when you read the word of God, there's a prophetic sound being released. When you read the word of God, and that's why sometimes I read it out loud, glory to God, and everything, there's a prophetic sound being released. Joshua, for him, a prophetic sound looked like this in 1 and 8. Keep the book of the law always on your lips. Meditate on it day and night so that you may be careful to do everything written in it. Then you will be prosperous and successful. For Joshua, this prophetic sound and writing would determine his success in leading God's people to greener pastures of peace and prosperity. Hallelujah. This wasn't just for Joshua's success and prosperity. It's so that he could lead. He had, he had taken the helm where Moses had been removed. And he's got to take God's people to their land of blessings and prosperity. Hallelujah. And God said the way you're going to do it, you're going to have, to have a prophetic sound, the word of God. Also, the scripture says in Psalms 119.11, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. For David, this prophetic sound in writing was stored up in his heart that he might follow God's word and avoid the sin of disobedience. A prophetic sound. Hallelujah. And we know that whenever we are facing something in our life, a temptation, the word of God is there. Oh, yes, if we got the word in us, it ain't like we can just take that word and lock it in a safe and say, okay, word, you know, though, that word going to come up. Hallelujah. We can resist it, but that word going to come up. Why? It's in our heart. Well, in Acts 20 and 20, the scripture says, you know that I have not hesitated to preach anything that you would be, that would be helpful to you, but have taught you publicly and from house to house. For Paul, the prophetic sound and writing allowed him to integrate in his conversations and communication of God's word. Oh yes, that prophetic sound that we have on the inside of us, the word of God, when we're in conversation, when we're communicating with people, I mean, oh, that word comes into, con that word come into conversation. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, you know, sometimes people say, well, I, you know, I want to talk, but I don't want you to say, they don't want you to say nothing about the Bible. <laughs> we can't talk. Because any counsel I give is called biblical counseling. That means I integrate the word of God in whatever we're facing and that's going to be the tool that I give you. Now, those who may not be of, of faith in Christ and may be a specialist, a skillful in psychology and all those things, they may not integrate the word of God, but I'm going to use the scripture because get this, I don't want nobody's blood on my hand. I want to know that I gave them and Paul said this, that's why he preached the full counsel of God, the whole counsel. There should not be a subject in the Bible in a situation in our world that the church cannot not hear from the pulpit. I don't care if it's homosexuality. I don't care what the subject is. We need to be able to communicate God's uh, truth on those subjects. Hallelujah. Adultery, fornication, whatever the case may be. I'm just naming some things. That, that's, that's the conversation the church have to be able to communicate what does God has to say about this? What does, I'm not talking about political parties. I'm not talking about men trying to dictate the women what they should do. I'm talking about the scriptures. Hallelujah. And we need to know it's in the book. Glory to God. It ain't like we got to go and try to find out where it is. It's in the Bible. And this is where people live. And these are things that we're dealing with in our world. So Paul said, I did not keep back anything that I knew that needed to be addressed in the context in which you all are in and whatever is going on, I brought the word of God in that context. I didn't hold it back. Why? Because I know truth is what help people. Hallelujah. Light is what help people. Well, the scripture says in Isaiah 53, uh, 3 through 5, it reads this. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrow and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely 
He have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. For Isaiah, this prophetic sound in writing allowed him to provide a witness of the coming of Jesus to provide spiritual restoration of God's creation that look unto Christ for hope in healing. Glory to God. Thank God it's in writing. Hallelujah. Thank God there's a prophetic sound written, the word of God, that lets us know that Jesus Christ came to bear our sins. Jesus Christ carried sickness and disease all on the cross. Hallelujah. He bore them. An innocent man came and gave his life for sin. Glory to God. He died for sin. He came for sin. That's why we don't have to be ashamed of the fact that we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God and that we all sin. We, we still miss the mark, but thank God that we've got a high priest that they crucified him, glory to God, and the world and the enemy thought it was over, but it was just getting started, glory to God, hallelujah. I thank God that Jesus was crucified. I thank God that Jesus went in the grave, but I thank God that glory to God. God, the grave could not hold him. He took the keys of death, held in the grave, and declared all power is given unto me in heaven and earth. Therefore, go, go in your faith, go in your fellowship, go in your love, go in your prayers, move forward in your life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Jesus is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm getting excited, saints. Our God is alive. Hallelujah. <laughs> yeah, gotta wait to know he's still talking about he rose. He's, he, he, he's alive. Glory to God. He's not dead. And because he's alive, you are alive. You've been brought back to new life in Christ. Glory to God. You are a new creation in Christ. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. You are the redeemed of the Lord. And you need to start saying so. You're not just a Christian just trying to make it. You are blessed and highly favored of the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Up. You are the child of the king. Glory to God. Your God rings in heaven and earth. Your God is there with you. He's a very present help in the time of trouble. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We got to stir up the anointing on the inside of us. And the way we stir it up is we hear a prophetic sound. Don't you go and well, you know, I got to go and find the prophet. I'll tell you what a prophet is. The prophet is in the word. Glory to God. It's a sure word of prophecy. The prophet is Jesus Christ. Glory to God. His word is infallible, indestructible, incorruptible. It's a living word of truth. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Well, we're excited about the word, and that's what we need to be excited about. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I, I get excited about the word. Some people say, oh, when they play my song, I get happy. Well, I no, no, no. When the word, I hear a sound, a prophetic sound from the word of God, the written word gets me excited because I know that is the word of the living God. You know, sometimes people request something in writing in order to hold someone accountable to their word. God provides a backer, a writing that provides him the grace and glory to get up and begin living as God had called him to live. Glory to God. And then all he has to do is not give up and wait on God's appointed time. Yes, this will require a day by day lifestyle of faith. And that's what the writing said. The writing said said, uh, make it plain on table that he may run who reads it for the vision is yet for an appointed time. You see, when you have a prophetic sound with that written word, man, guess what? You can go back to it. You can go back and read it. You can go back and meditate upon it. Why? Because God has an appointed time. That's why you don't give up. That's why you don't let discouragement come and hold you bound. That's why you don't, you know, sit at the house and just keep yourself in a dark room and, and feel like I just, you know, I just feel this way. Get out of your feeling and get in your faith. I'm encouraging you now. I'm not putting you down. But what I'm telling you, that God, God don't want you in that state. God wants you to put a smile on your face. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And you know, we have to wear these masks and stuff now. People say, well, I can't see their smile. But get this, your smile can be behind a mask. But when it's coming from your heart, it doesn't matter what other people see. You know in yourself, I'm smiling, I'm rejoicing, glory to God. 
And then it goes on to say in verse uh, number, number uh, verse three tells us, wait for it, though it tarry, keep on waiting, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming, those prayers, it's coming. What you believe in God for, it's coming, glory to God, hallelujah. Faith is now the substance of things hoped for in the evidence of things I see. It's here, glory to God, hallelujah. That's when you begin to flip over and you flip it on the other side. When you build one side, you say it's coming, but you flip it over, it's here. Here I receive it in the name of Jesus. Mark 11, 24 say, whatsoever things you desire when you pray, believe that you received. If you prayed about it, if you prayed about it, glory to God, flip it over. What? I received it in Jesus' name. <laughs> On this side, it's coming. Yeah, it's coming because God is faithful. But get this, there's another side that says what? <laughs> I receive it in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Galatians 6, 7 tells us, be not weary in well-doing for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Oh, we don't give up. We're not those who turn back. We're not those who, you know, start, you know, getting in fear. No, we're not that crowd. We're the faith crowd. Hallelujah. We're the ones that trust God. Well, her back is now able to move from trying to figure out how and why with God uh, to prayer with power and purpose. Because in verse four, the revelation came, the just shall live by faith. That was his answer. That was his answer right there. You got to get in faith, Habakkuk. You got to get in faith. You got to believe what God said and trust God based on what he said. But then we see here that that now he moves to a place of prayer in chapter three. Just turn there real quick. In chapter three, verse one, say a prayer of a back of the prophet on Shiknonah. Oh, Lord, I have heard your speech and was afraid. Oh, Lord, revive your work in the midst of the years. In the midst of the years, make it known in wrath. Remember mercy. You see, Habakkuk is now at peace with his faith and fellowship with God. In other words, God wins and he chooses the winning side and requests preserve or make alive your work. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Man, his prayer has changed now. His prayer is not, God, are you working? Will you work? How are you working? And the Lord, revive your work. Preserve it. Do it again, God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God, uh, this man moved in faith. And then if you come over to verse number 17, oh, glory to God, I like this right here. Or uh, he says this in verse 17, though the fig tree may not blossom, nor fruit be on the vines, though the labor of the olive may fail, in the fields yield no food, and there be no herd in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. The Lord God is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet, and he will make me walk on my high. Oh, those are some shouting words right there. I don't know what you're doing right now. You may just want to get up and shout a little bit right there. Glory to God. You may just want to praise him. You may want to do a Holy Ghost dance right there. Glory to God. Hallelujah. God's talking about messing with your feet. Hallelujah. He said your feet going to be like deer feet. Glory to God. You're going to be swift. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. A back is in a place of peace. He's in a place of fellowship with God. He's on God. He's get this. He's on the winning side. And then he says, though the Chaldeans invasion will strip the land. That's what he's saying in verse 17. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Their invasion is going to strip the land. But get this. Habakkuk will rejoice in the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. In other words, it does not matter what the enemy is going to do. It does not matter what's happening around me. But on the inside of me, there's going to be rejoicing, glory to God. I told you, saints, it doesn't matter what storm you're in. You can get to praise your way through that storm. You can rejoice in the Lord. And rejoicing is a decision of our faith. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, rejoice in the Lord. And again, I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known to all men that the Lord is at hand. Be anxious for nothing but through prayer and supplication and intercession and thanksgiving make your request known unto God and the peace of God get this now the peace of God is going to garrison is going to God it's going to just literally just come and surround your heart in your mind hallelujah so back up in verse 18 he just decided you know what I'm not looking at what the enemy is doing I'm not looking at how things look in the natural I believe he's tapped into the supernatural 
I believe he's moved to another level. Hallelujah. I believe he went upstairs. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I believe spiritually speaking, I believe he transitioned off the lower level and he done moved into the upper level. And he know up here, man, there's no place for complaining. There's no place for murmuring. There's no place for being sorrowful and feeling defeated. I've been, I get, oh, glory to God. I've, I, I've been elevated to another level. Glory to God. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Saints, I'm telling you right now, God wants you to get on your spiritual elevator and just, oh, glory to God, go to the top floor. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Go to the top floor. Get, oh, get on the roof. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm excited. I'm excited about the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm excited about the word. I remember when we were out there in the world. We would be out there dad talking about let the roof come down. Man, we didn't want no roof to come down. No, 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 no. But in God's kingdom, God said, I'm not going to let the roof fall on you. I want you to come up to the top. I want you to be elevated to a place where you're no longer on that level of just depending on the natural and operating in the natural. I want you to move into the supernatural. Glory to God. And then he closes in verse number 19. Okay, verse 18, he rejoices. But but get this, he, he, he said, who makes his feet like deer feet, signifying, get this now, sure-footed confidence. That's what that is. Oh, yeah, he said, he said, the Lord is my strength. And he's going to make my feet like deer. I told you God's going to mess with your feet. <laughs> Glory to God. He's going to get you moving. He's going to move you. But he's going he to have you running from the enemy. He ain't going to have you running away from him. He's going to elevate you. Glory to God. And he's going to make you walk on the high places of life. Glory to God. You're going to begin to operate in a level of life. Glory to God. Perhaps you never operated on. You ain't going to be up and down. You ain't going to be in and out. You ain't going to be, you know, one minute trusting God, the next minute doubting God. You're just going to learn to walk with the Lord. Glory to God. You're going to have peace. You're going to have confidence in the wonderful name of Jesus. Well, Stand on course with God requires a desire and a discipline to allow God to speak to our hearts in order to enable us to have clarity and counsel that reveals his active participation in our personal experience. Yes, God is at work. And we say it also is to help us to trust in him in the manner which he chooses to bring discipline and deliverance in our life. And I'm telling you, saying we can be praying, but God may be moving in such a way that it may not look like God, but it's all God. Hallelujah. And then God watches over his word, not only to perform it, but to plant it in our hearts. So, so he provides a vision of what to expect in the future that keeps us on the path of faith in the present. Hallelujah. And I believe right now, boy, you've been stirred up. I believe that. Oh, glory to God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. I believe that, you know, the Holy Ghost, those tongues be want to flow. But, you know, sometimes you're in a place where, you know, you don't want to confuse people. But, man, I'm telling you, it's a well. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory. Oh, that's what John, man, in John chapter 7, verse 37, said, But Jesus stood and cried out, saying unto them, If any man thirst, let him come unto me to drink. And out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Boy, there's rivers flowing on me now. Rivers flowing in you. Glory to God. I tell you what, hallelujah. Oh, praise God. I wish I had some folk I could just lay hands on right now. <laughs> I got, oh, in the name of Jesus, I release this anointing, Father, to all those that are listening right now. I release this anointing, God, that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, the power of the Almighty will come up on them, God. And Lord, you will make their feet like deer feet. You will cause them to walk on the high places of life. You will bring spiritual elevation in their life. You will bring an anointing of increase in their life. You will set their heart ablaze on spiritual things, God. Oh, they will begin to confess the word of God out of their mouth. They will begin to take the shield of faith. They will begin to take the sword of the spirit, Father. They will stand with the whole arm of God on and after doing all, they're going to stand against the wiles of the devil in the wonderful name of Jesus, Father. And every fiery dart that the enemy has sent against their life, I oh, glory to God. That shield of faith now, Lord, it's just, it's just, it's keeping them from touching them. It, it, those darts cannot even touch them, Father, because their faith is out there and active in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, I, uh, you just go ahead and receive that in Jesus' name. That's the anointing. Hallelujah. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Well, we're going to go ahead and stop. And I want to share some announcements here. It's hard to transition to some announcement now, boy. I read it. Glory to God. You know, when this turn off, I, I'm going to go and just get over there and just shout a little bit and dance a little bit in the anointing. Uh, give God the glory. Hallelujah. But I want to thank you for fellowshipping and feasting in God's word with me. This, this prophetic 
uh, 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 word is, is so powerful to empower us and to inspire us so that we can press forward. You're going forward. You're moving forward. Glory to God. Whatever was behind is behind, but you, you, there's a mark in front of you, and you're pressing forward to that mark, and you're doing it with joy, and you're doing it with the strength of the Lord. I want to thank Word Alive members. Thank you for completing those surveys. Some I mean, of you haven't completed it, please go ahead and fill it out. If you've already completed, don't go and, you know, duplicate that. But if you haven't completed it, go ahead and fill that out. Uh, we got two edifying, encouraging, enriching assignments uh, to keep under your radar prayer. And, uh, and, if, if, and if called on, if someone reach out to you, be willing to participate. Uh, uh, but we're having what we call a drive up joy on October the 31st. And we want to maintain an element of normalcy with our children as much as possible. They've been through this, this terrain of this COVID-19. Our children are having to, you know, weather, weather this thing and they don't have the uh, 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 capacity that we have, but we as parents, we pray for them, we try to communicate with them, but this is a change for them as well. And we want to be able to provide some sense of normalcy. And so, so we're going to be doing that and we're going to have that drive up joy on October the 31st. And also, we're going to have an evening where uh, the worship team is going to come out, and we're going to be outside there in that parking lot. But we're just going to have a praise in the parking lot, come out and just sing songs and celebrate the goodness of God. Our real moment of saints, I'm going to be dealing with a subject that I believe has just been on my heart with people that are Christians and having to deal with what we call uh, cognitive uh, behavior challenges. And, uh, and I, I want you to join me for a real moment. Uh, you know someone that's been struggling with that and everything. And, and uh, on Tuesday and Friday at 2 p.m., we're talking about Christians when it comes to cognitive behavior and uh, whether or not Christians should uh, get help with that and see a therapist and all this kind of stuff. I pray that you get the wisdom of God on that. And Wednesday in the Word, we're continuing to minister about uh, finding purpose through parables. So we honor the Lord for you and thank God for just Staying present, I know uh, the word of God make me excited, so I, I don't I don't apologize for that. Glory to God, y'all all know me. I'm not ashamed of of the gospel. And I'm not ashamed of the anointing of praise that come upon me to give God the glory to His name. But thank you for being faithful, steadfast in the things of God. God bless you and have a great day in Jesus Christ's name.